Don, this, I don't know if it's occurred to you yet, but this coming season is the 20th year since you stopped coaching. It's That's unbelievable. Believe. What do you think about that? 20 years that I've been out of coaching? Yeah. It uh, seems like only yesterday that people were yelling at me and getting <laughs> mad and uh, saying, why'd you do this and why'd you do that? Right. You told me once that the, the thing you missed most was the Sunday afternoon, the, the, those three hours when you were on the sideline and everything was happening. It's something you could never predict, you could never replicate. It's just, uh, you know, you just got to make it happen when, it, when you're presented with a situation. And, you, you know, you practice and you gear up all week long for all the things that can happen. Then you find out you didn't do enough. There was more that happened that you thought would happen. Right. And, uh, just, uh, it's just a fascinating game. It's a game of making quick decisions and, uh, you know, and, and making the decisions that you make, make them the right decisions, make them work. Mm -hmm. That's what coaching is all about. You're the only coach in all of professional sports who's associated with the word perfection. Um, I like that. I like that <laughs> association. That what does sounds that mean good. To you? Yeah. But what does that mean to you? It, it just being having that singular distinction after all these years? Well, because of the fact that yeah, you're the only one and we were the only team, it just makes it that much more important. It gives you that much more pride in the accomplishment. And uh, so uh, uh, until somebody you know, duplicates it, then uh, we're gonna just take a lot of pride. The significance of the 72 team is, is pretty apparent, and we've discussed it a little bit, but did you think at the time that all these years later we'd be still talking about it as unique, as the only one to be unbeaten? No, I, re I really didn't. I mean, we were just, uh, I think the, the Dolphins were 3 10 and 1 the year before I got to Miami. And then we went ten, ten and four the next year and got beat, I think, in the first playoff game. And then, you know, the got into the Super Bowl and then got in and won it the next year and then won back to back Super Bowls. So there was a you know, a lot of success early and it kept getting better and the team was just a great great football team there. Very unselfish, you know, Greasy mm -hmm. was the perfect quarterback for for that football team and Zonka, you know, you just pointed him in the right direction. And he was going to get you the touchdown or the one or two yards for the first down and you could always count on him. And then you had Kick and Mercury and, you know, Larry Little. We had a lot of Hall of Famers that, oh, yeah. that uh, were on that football team. What else do you want to be remembered for besides the two championships? Uh, winning the most games, I think that uh, there have been a lot of coaches that have coached over a period of time, a lot of great coaches, and to know now that uh, my record, uh, uh, I've won the most games, my teams have won the most games, and uh, that's something I'm very proud of. You and Joe Robbie had, how do you describe that relationship? A little stormy maybe, or over the years? What, what did you think of Joe Robbie? Yeah, I thought a great deal of him. Uh, and <laughs> I think our relationship at times was stormy, but it was over things that weren't that important. But overall, he did uh, he did the, the things that I needed to have done to be successful as a coach. You know, how he came up with the money is unbelievable. He was like a magician. He put it together, and uh, he just uh, an amazing guy. Not everything about any career is perfect. What, if any, regrets do you have? Oh, not a lot. <laughs> I just, uh, I guess, you know, maybe we could have won another uh, game that, uh, that we didn't win. But overall, when I think about uh, the things that we did do, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with, uh, you know, the things that happened in, in the career that uh, I had down here. Uh, this week has, has been the most difficult, uh, it's been soul-searching, 
gut wrenching, you know, all of those things. Uh, it started out early in the week where I had made the decision that uh, I was going to honor my contract and intended to. Your career ended in '95. Um, and I, uh, I'm and over the years, you and I have broached this subject as well. I don't think it ended quite as perfectly as you would have wanted. Um, when, when you think of Wayne Heising at the time was enamored of Jimmy Johnson. Um, Jimmy who? Yeah. <laughs> how do you look back on how it ended for you? Hey, you're right. I, you know, I wasn't uh, very happy about that. Uh, and uh, uh, Jimmy, uh, who was a big favorite of mine, and uh, uh, so you know to to go out with with him coming in to take my place, then he left. Then they brought him back, and he left again. So uh, those those aren't high spots in my career. Mm -hmm. You know, I've what thirty three years. So there's a lot. To, that's been written and said. Some of it upset me, and uh, but I I didn't let it linger on, because uh, you know you can't live that way. Mm -hmm. You just got to be positive and move ahead and think about the good things that that are going on and the good things that are being written and said. And that's how I tried to live my life. Was just you know uh, you're always aware of the negative things. I'd. Uh, on the way to work, I'd have my car radio on. And when I got to the office, I'd be so upset. It'd take me about a half hour to settle down because of some of the things that uh, Greg Cody said or Joe Rose said or whoever said. But I learned how to handle it. Mm -hmm.